Erev Tov Kharim, I'm Stephen Benuni. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got some articles I want to skim over here with you and probably won't read all the information here. But I've been watching now for the last week or so more uh, tensions that are rising between Russia and the United States, especially in light of the latest uh, Russian provocation with its own planes flying only within meters uh, or feet, as you would. In this case here, pictured on the screen, a Russian Su-24 bomber comes within 50 feet of the USS Donald Cook in the, in the Baltic Sea. Uh, the USS Donald Cook was uh, working on a maneuver there, a, uh, or excuse me, a NATO war exercise with Poland, a refueling operation there with its helicopters when the Russian warplanes came uh, within very pro close proximity, passing some 11 times past the USS Donald Cook. Uh, John Kerry goes so far as to say in the article here on Breitbart News uh, that this was a justification under uh, wartime circumstances to shoot the plane down. Well, maybe the uh, maybe the Secretary of State John Kerry has a very good reason to have this type of feeling because whether or not it's been reported in U.S. news or not, about a year ago, the same ship in the Baltic Sea doing NATO war games once again and actually coming in, according to Russia, its own Tegra into, uh, uh, interna or excuse me, not international waters, but into Russian territorial waters, Russia did the exact same maneuvering, flying close by. But this time, for some reason, the U.S. Donald Cook ended up becoming a, a floating duck, you might say, uh, as a result of a technical failure of the ship. Seems to be that the USS, or the, excuse me, the uh, Russian Federation was actually using some type of technology that totally collapsed the capability of the USS Donald Cook there. Now, that can only be speculated on exactly what technology that, uh, the, that Russia is using, but I can only imagine that uh, Russia is definitely using advanced technology uh, that can do such, just such as that there. Uh, the, in this article right here, though, they, they do speak about uh, how that uh, on April the 13th, pilots from the Russian Air Force Su-24 planes took part in a training exercise over international waters. This was RT News reporting on this one here. Uh, this was justifying, actually it's not the same article, it was a different article. That was CN, uh, no, Britbart News is where John Kerry, one of the articles there where he said that they were justified to shoot the plane down. RT News is claiming that Russia was actually uh, participating in exercises as well uh, in the very same location where uh, the USS Donald Cook was at, and did fly-by maneuvers, totally unarmed aircraft, at least that's the way it appears to the naked eye, but uh, like I said, what the U.S. went through a year before kind of makes the United States just a little bit uneasy uh, in this particular situation. CNN, on April the 18th of 2016 today, Russia denies wrongdoing after the jet barrel rolls over a U.S. aircraft. That was another incident that just took place. That was, of course, yesterday as well, where a Russian uh, uh, bomber does do a barrel roll over a U.S. spy plane. Not just any U.S. aircraft, but it's a U.S. spy plane. But then again, both the United States and Russia have both been provoking one another. It was just recently that the United States also, while Russia the defense minister was flying in international waters headed to a base in southern Russia there to inspect the troops there. Next thing he knows, he has U.S. NATO aircraft fighter jets flying within eye distance of their plane there, not knowing really why. So they're kind of provoking one another. And then again, Russia has also been on a major military buildup. In fact, on the aircraft alone, they have received over 1,000 new aircraft for its military. Not to mention the submarines. Submarines, so many of them now being deployed and so well made, so stealthy, that it's got the United States and even NATO's partners very concerned about the technology. The U.S. has also been beefing up its own uh, war games dealing with anti-sub hunts and things of this nature. 
Article RT brings out U.S. can't keep pace with Russian submarine deployments, top Navy official states. Says the U.S. Navy is facing better and more numerous Russian submarines capable of taking out aircraft carrier groups. The service can ensure full awareness of Russian sub activities, CNN reported, citing an American admiral. The submarines that we're seeing are much more stealthy, Admiral Mark Ferguson, commander of the U.S. Naval Forces in Europe, told the news channel. We're seeing the Russians have more advanced weapon systems, missile systems that can attack. Uh, land at long ranges, and we also see their operating proficiency as getting better as they range further from home waters, he states there. But then again, there are problems all over the world for Russia. The United States is very intelligent. They're not, you're not dealing with a military and, and a CIA that hasn't been doing some serious practice over the years with other smaller rogue nations. Uh, on how to topple a nation. And it looks like, and some of the evidence that we're going to speak about now, the United States has been planning probably for a long time. They're planning for the confrontation with Russia, and they're setting everything up, getting their stage ready for the big war that may be inevitable in the near future. Another little thought here is something that Russia on Pravda Dot our use, uh, their article, U.S. provokes a war between Russia and Europe, Colonel General says. Says the American redeployed a tank brigade from the U.S. to the Eastern Europe. Well, that's about 4,000 uh, troops there, 250 tanks, 1,700 vehicles or so, give or take a few, Bradley armored vehicles, etc. Colonel General Lederal, uh, excuse me, Ivashov, president of the International Center of Geopolitical Ana Analysts, estimated the situation for Pravda.ru, their, their article right there. In, in the article here, though, it says the U.S. makes everything possible to provoke an armed conflict between Russia and Europe. Of course, what the colonel is wanting to bring out in here is that the United States is only using the situation with Eastern Europe and Russia to get the war started, and that the United States would be the great savior of Europe and come in on a knight in shining armor on their white stallion to rescue Eastern Europe. But the U.S. is very intelligent in the way they're handling their wars. They typically use the other nations to fight the battles, just like in the case of Syria. The United States wanted to topper Bashar al-Assad, but the U.S., even though they could with their own military go in there and obliterate al-Assad, they decided instead to bring about a civil war. Let the people kill each other from within. That's what they've been doing. Now the United States is in a much bigger chess match. They're fighting over Syria because they didn't expect that Russia would actually put a military basis inside of Syria and begin to protect Bashar al-Assad. In fact, by the way, he was recently elected with a landslide victory in his own country in his own political uh, election there, and became once again elected by the people as president. I kind of thought about doing a, a separate news article just on the election there of Assad, saying that democracy in Syria is much like the democracy in the United States. It's pretty much all crooked. At least that's what Donald Trump would probably tell you right about now under the circumstances that he's facing. And quite frankly, I don't think that Donald Trump will ever become president of the United States. It will be a toss-up between Hillary and Bernie Sanders. But nonetheless, Bernie Sanders, if he doesn't make president, is definitely going to play a major key role in the administration, if not president or vice president himself. You know, he's playing along with the papacy. He did meet with the Pope. They did have a very interesting conversation together. Would love to have been a fly on the wall with that conversation. But they are making plans. He is the perfect president for a new world order. Got a special report we're going to be doing on that that might just open your eyes to what's really coming in a new world order. A little different than what you think. What would you think if there were no religions? What would you think if there were no governments? What would you think if there was only one man ruling the entire world? Sounds like to me that the Vatican has been plotting and planning to set up their millennial reign. They're faking a millennial reign. 
That's what the New World Order is really going to come out to be. At least that's what they'll try to do. Anyway, he does ask the question, the colonel does here, how will we respond? Russia is ready to provide a response with political and diplomatic means, as well as the military ones, uh, Ivashov said. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Defense Robert Work explained the necessity of the U.S. Armed Forces deployment with the fact that the Eastern Europe countries uh, doubt U.S. readiness to defend them given rise of the Russian aggression. The readiness has never existed. Why doesn't the U.S. defend Europe from the influx of terrorists, migrants, refugees? Or on the contrary, they provoke all these processions. And this is what the uh, Russian uh, military colonel said, Ivashov. He said that they're actually causing all the problems. Well, we do know the United States has certainly did, been a major player in contributing to this. But is it part of a greater global plan? Well, the global plan also is to bring President Putin into submission to the New World Order. They're seeing that President Putin has become a major obstacle in collapsing the New World Order. Because as he has been very vocal about it, he is against a New World Order, will not accept the cashless society, and is going to have the Russian ruble backed by gold. I wouldn't rush out to buy a bunch of Russian ruble either because I don't think that it's going to work out, even though he's got a good idea. It says here, Washington silent as Putin masses troops in Armenia on the border of Turkey. Now, keep in mind, Vladimir Putin does have two military bases already in Armenia. They've been there for quite a number of years and just recently signed a new contract to again keep those troops even longer. Now this article here is, a, is about, oh, maybe, I want to say it's about a week, 10 days old, something like that. But it says the buildup in Armenia has been glossed over in Washington despite being a key piece of Vladimir Putin's plan to dominate the region, along with its proxy Syria and growing military ties with Iran. Most importantly, Armenia shares an approximate 165-mile border with Turkey, a NATO member, and the alliance's southern flank. You see, so, and I say this in all respect for my own people, my own countrymen, but we're being duped over, guys. We're being duped over by a new world order. It doesn't matter to me. If we had true democracy, I would be all for it. But this is not about democracy. If it was about democracy, do you think you would have had someone like President Barack Obama stating that Donald Trump will never be president of the United States? Where's the democracy in that? Where is that let the political system do its job? They see Donald Trump as a threat to the New World Order agenda. Why do you think the Pope of Rome did meet with Bernie Sanders? They need a man like him that sides with them, that is Jewish, that can get a Palestinian state set the way they want it, that can bring about a cashless society, socialism or fascism, whichever way you would like to hand it out. Well, Putin has not been going along with the New World Order plan. But don't think that the United States, and not just the United States, it's not just this, and, and I really want to make this clear, this is not the United States people. Most of the United States, many of them are believers in Yeshua. They are Christian people that love the Lord and would have no part of a New World Order. This is a Vatican agenda to bring about a one world religion and a one world de de uh, government a new world order. Maybe they even collapse Catholicism. Who knows what they're planning on doing. But my point is, and when I say this here, Vladimir Putin is an obstacle in the way. But they're very intelligent in what they're doing. So this is the reason why we had the conflict all of a sudden that erupts between Azerbaijani and the Armenian forces. Azerbaijan it's like, why all of a sudden did this war start up? Well, you have to realize that Azerbaijan and Ankara, or Turkey, happen to be extremely close allies. So close, in fact, that Erdogan has referred to them before as being one nation with two different states. So they got the problem all heated up to make sure that Russia has a problem on the other side of the border. 
so that they have to kind of watch their back, so to speak. According to the article on The Guardian here, conflict erupts between Azerbaijani and Armenian forces. At least 30 soldiers and a boy were reported killed as having fighting erupted between Ar Armeni Armenian and Azerbaijani forces over the separatist region of the, of the uh, nagorno karabakh and fighting was one of the worst outbreaks since the end of the full-scale war over the region in 1994. So it's easy little hotbed to get the hostilities all started up again. It was the same thing with Ukraine. There was something about Ukraine that NATO and their allies, of course, it's the Vatican that's really pushing all this. The Vatican knows where to stir up the problems. So they send in the CIA along using the Secret Service intelligence from the Vatican to bring in the Nazis in order to overthrow the country and start killing all the Russians there. So they destabilize that area. Well, Russia, getting ready to deal with Turkey, moves their forces in to Armenia, a bigger force, in case they have to fight with Turkey. And Turkey, on the other hand, getting some advice from NATO, what to do now, get Azerbaijan in the, involved in this and cause a conflict on that side. And if that's not all, well, guess what? As we reported a little while back, before it came out in an English source for you guys, we had already found the source with Poroshenko is meeting with Erdogan, and there was a plan to retake back Crimea. You see... NATO is making sure that Russia has more fronts than it can possibly handle. This here was on AW, AWD News on March 11th of 2016. Erdogan promises to help Ukraine return Crimea. We have a plan to take the city back, he states. Turkey does not recognize the annexation of Crimea by Russian Federation and is jointly planning with Ukraine steps for its deoccupation. This was stated by the president of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the president of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko at a joint press conference in Ankara. Turkey did not recognize the illegal annexation of Crimea and it is not going to do either. We have a plan to take the city back from the Russians, Erdogan said. According to him, Russia violated international law in this matter. Mr. President, so, uh, of Turkey supported the joint steps aimed at the deoccupation of Crimea. For this plan, we will work together in the framework of international organizations on the basis of a new international formats, including the format of Geneva Plus. Well, even in the articles that we were looking at in the Ukrainian uh, language, we discovered that they had have they have a time set and everything for the attack. NATO is planning something for Russia. The question is, is does Russia realize that they're fixing to be drawn into a battle on a global scale in many different areas? This is part of being able to kind of throw Russia off balance so that they can totally collapse everything. Well, that's not the only problem going on. Remember, Syria right now is where the hotbed is. I've had friends there two different friends in Israel that have given me two different reports of different, whether it be fighter jets or helicopters in mass numbers flying over the Golan going up towards Lebanon. Lebanon, remember, is a Russian ally. Iran is a Russian ally. Russia has just sent the S-300s. They did a huge parade right there in Iran showing off the new S-300 and, of course, other missiles that you don't see in the video footage of the parade that they have. Well, see, Russia's having to get ready. There's fixing to be a war going on in the Middle East. Now, it looks like you would think, and this is why I believe Israel actually went up to the Golan, and Netanyahu did a Knesset meeting in the Golan. He says, I choose to hold the festive meeting in the Golan Heights in order to convey a clear message. The Golan Heights will always remain under Israeli control. Israel will never withdraw from the Golan Heights. Now, I applaud the prime minister for this bold action that he's taken. This land does belong to Israel. And so does a lot of Jordan and also even more of Syria. A lot of this land does belong to the Israeli people. But you have to understand, Prime Minister, you're not part of NATO. And although you're siding with NATO, you're siding with Rome, just as our forefathers did 2,000 years ago after the Maccabee brothers they ended up making an alliance with Rome only to have it backfire on them. And that's about what you're to do again. Notice though what happened 2,000 years ago, Prime Minister Netanyahu. 
more than 2,000 years ago. Before Yeshua ever came into Israel, what was going on? Well, the Greeks at one time controlled the region around Israel. And then the Maccabee brothers stood up, and in the revolt, they took back the Temple Mount, they cleansed it, etc., did the things there, and they relit the menorah. We know the, the wonderful story that we have about the menorah, the lighting of the, of the, of the candles there, and they, they burned for eight days miraculously with the one ball of oil. But the point that I want to make here is that our forefathers went and made a covenant with Rome because of fear of the other nations. Well, did you forget that they also had a covenant with Syria as well? At least by the first century anyway. They didn't have it at the time that we made the covenant with them. And that's pretty much the same thing that you see happening again today. Israel has gone and made a covenant with Rome. And guess what? The time is nearing where Rome is going to make a covenant with Syria. But it was after the covenant that's made with Syria in the first century that Titus, the Roman general, comes down and allies with that Arab group there of the Syrians, and they topple Jerusalem. Maybe then Mashiach will come. So as much as I appreciate the prime minister and his stand that he did, they don't honor anything we do. If, if the truth of the matter is, according to the British mandate, all of these areas were given to Israel, including the West Bank, including Jerusalem, including a lot of the, the land over in the country called Jordan today, then why don't they give up what they have annexed and give it back to Israel? It's not going to happen. But of course, even though the prime minister has been bold in making this stand, we have on Arab League joins the Golan Heights free for all. Israel National News brings this article out on April the 18th. And of course, the picture is from the article off the RT where uh, uh, Nasrallah is also threatening uh, re retaliation for Israel killing of their commander in Syria. That's old news, but he was nothing but a, but a child murderer in the first place. The man needed to be taken out. But anyway, Arab League chief Nabil al-Arabi on Monday denounced uh, uh, as an escalation Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's remarks Monday in the first cabinet meeting on the Golan Heights in which he declared that the Golan will always remain under Israeli control. Uh, uh, Arabi, the Secretary General of the Pan-Arabic Bloc headquarters in Cairo, said Netanyahu's statement was a new escalation that represents a brazen violation of international law. So again, Prime Minister of Israel, I have to tell you, my brother, this NATO alliance that is fixing to embroil itself in a battle with Russia on different fronts is going to turn against Israel as well. They're going to make a covenant with Syria somewhere along the way. They may get into a confrontation with Russia. They may get into it. They may not. But nonetheless, if they get into a confrontation with Russia, they will come to an agreement. They will settle the battle. They will make a covenant with Syria. And then they will turn on Israel. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. I hope, by the way, guys, I'm able to get to the other message that I've got to bring out for my Jewish brethren tonight. Pray for me. And again, stand with us. Right just in a moment here, you'll see on here... Uh, or of course, you have our website here on the screen for you now. If you would like to support this ministry, we do need your help in making these things possible. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Okay.